Fifty years ago, the popular animated series The Jetsons predicted a dehumanized society of automatons, where machines perform functions once relegated to people. As technology continues to advance and invade every nuance of our everyday lives, the question becomes whether technology is influencing us in a positive or a negative way. Is technology a hero or a villain? Is our technologically advanced society doomed to follow this trajectory that will have us one day subjugating our capabilities entirely to automation, as depicted in the futuristic world of the Jetsons? Technology has made the world such a great place in the sense that it's provided so many opportunities and advancements in communication, education, global economics, galactic connectivity, and medicine. But it has also influenced us in a less obvious, perhaps more unfortunate way. Specifically, technology has made the world seem like a smaller place in the sense that you can talk with someone in another country face to face, and you can travel to that other country in a matter of hours. However, technology has also distanced us from one another. People are connected to technology, but disconnected from the tactile experience of human interaction and connectivity that was once fundamental to everyday life. This is a picture of my sisters. The human is named Grace, and the three dogs are Kayla, Zoe, and Noelle. I love my sisters so much, and I miss them when we're not all together. Grace and I, with our phones in hand and our computers readily accessible, are able to stay connected despite our physical separation. We can call, text, or email throughout the day to check in and see how each other's doing. With my other three sisters, though, the situation is a little bit different. When I leave each morning for school, I have to say goodbye to them, and I don't get to see them again until after a day full of learning and extracurricular activities. There is no way to stay connected because they lack the ability to manage technology and opposable thumbs. <laughs> Did George Jetson ever think about poor Astro alone at home all day by himself? Did Jane worry while she was out shopping whether Astro was jumping on the furniture trying to chew up Rosie the robotic maid? I know many of us do worry about our pets, and I envisioned a world where we could use technology to interact with our entire family, be it human or animals. I shared this idea with my friends and family, and I wanted to pursue it, and they were so encouraging. I started building prototypes in my garage of what I was envisioning, and with the help of my dad managing, managing the power tools, of course. But, and then I went to an event called Startup Weekend, where I shared this idea, and I got the opportunity to work with amazing professionals that helped me develop this idea even further over just a 54-hour period of time. Not only did this kickstart the process, but it also strengthened my relationships within the business community. Before I knew it, I had an amazing team of software developers, mechanical engineers, patent attorneys, and investors, all willing to help me see this product through. And together, we were able to create something amazing. IC Pooch is a device that lets you two-way video chat with your dog and deliver them a treat from anywhere in the world. While I'm away from my dogs, I can check in on them and see how they're doing. And I know that they're grateful for the interaction and the treat, of course, but I also have peace of mind knowing that they're doing okay. And I love seeing their smiling faces while I'm at work, on vacation, or at home. I See Pooch went on sale in July of 2014, and the public response was incredible. I got the opportunity to share this idea with the world through science and business competitions, as well as national publications and television shows. I learned so much about the entrepreneurial journey, about facing obstacles and overcoming them and pursuing your dreams in spite of all of that. And it was this entrepreneurial spirit that encouraged me to look at other applications for this same technology. And before I knew it, I was thinking, well, Technology and this, this technology is great for people connecting with their pets, whether that be dogs, cats, chickens, or turtles, but it's also an amazingly easy and manageable solution to communication for people. Specifically, we focused in on socially isolated seniors and disabled individuals. This group often struggles with the ability to um, manage the ins and outs of technology. And 
this leaves them disconnected from their loved ones and families' everyday lives. Now, whatever happened to Grandma Jetson? Did George Parker somewhere in a home for galactic geezers? And maybe Grandma wasn't up with the time. She didn't understand teleportation or flying cars. My grandma was unable to answer the telephone, much less, you know, navigate Facebook or initiate a video chat due to a disease that affected her motor skills and cognition. So whether it's an unwillingness to learn about technology or an inability to manage it, our socially isolated loved ones need a way to stay connected and stay healthy. We are currently preparing to launch IC Loved Ones, which does just that. It enables caregivers and family members to interact with their loved ones and check in to make sure that they're doing okay, with the added ability to dispense medication to ensure that your loved ones do not forget to take it. This technology is merging the physical world with the digital one, ensuring that our socially isolated loved ones and beloved family members are not being left behind in the continuous acceleration of technology. In our quickly advancing society, it is our responsibility to ensure that to rehumanize technology so that by using it, we can make the world a better place. You know, it used to be that people lived next door to their grandparents and spent a majority of their day running through the neighborhood with their dogs. And this, um, this kind of environment and proverbial village that it takes to raise children and extended family unit made for a more connected family, home, community, and world. And while technology has provided us with amazing opportunities, it has also distanced us from those that we love and care for the most. You know, it, families live far apart, and kids spend more time on their phones than they do playing with their dogs or chatting with their families over dinner. I propose that if we readjust and retarget technology, we can include our socially isolated loved ones so that we can know again the joy of interpersonal connection. Thank you.